Edgar Allan Poe is a name you're probably already familiar with. The writer has often been called the father of the modern detective story, so it's only fitting that he's still stirring up mystery and publicity over 150 years after his death. Let's explore the history of the man only known as the Poe Toaster. Edgar Allan Poe became a household name way back in 1845 when his still famous poem, The Raven, was published. Unfortunately, fame didn't seem to improve his life at all. He still struggled financially and was said to hit the bottle quite a bit. Just four years after The Raven was published, he died mysteriously at the age of 40. I've already done a video surrounding the bizarre circumstances of his death, which I will link below if you're interested. Poe was buried in the burial grounds of Westminster Presbyterian Church in Baltimore, where he lived for a part of his life. He was originally buried in an unmarked grave, but money for a headstone was finally raised 26 years later and was put next to the cemetery gate. Poe's body was soon moved to this location. His wife, Virginia Clem, was originally buried elsewhere, but her body was then set to be moved to this location. A Poe biographer named William Gill had her body excavated for this purpose, but took her bones and kept them at his house for years before finally returning them to Baltimore so she could be buried with her husband. Then, in 1949, 100 years after Poe's death, rumors began to swirl. Witnesses at the Presbyterian Church were seeing a mysterious figure next to Poe's grave. The visitor reportedly came in the early morning hours of Poe's birthday, January 19th, wearing a black, wide-brimmed hat and coat, as well as a white scarf. The person, who was assumed to be male because of what physical appearance witnesses could see, would always leave three roses and a half-empty bottle of cognac on Poe's grave. It's not entirely clear why the Poe toaster left these particular things. Over the years, it's been speculated that the roses represent Poe, his wife, and mother-in-law, who was also buried there. The cognac is a bit more mysterious since Poe never actually wrote about cognac, but some people believe it's because he loved cognac himself, though he could rarely afford it. As for why the bottle is half empty, there's no telling. Maybe it's some sort of weird symbolism that goes over my head, or maybe the toaster himself just really likes cognac. An article or two was written in local papers over the years, but the story of the Poe Toaster remained somewhat of an urban legend, that is, until 1977. This is Jeff Jerome. Until recently, he was the curator of the Edgar Allan Poe House and Museum in Baltimore. He's also central to the story of the Poe Toaster. Jerome found out about the Poe Toaster in 1977 when he happened by Poe's grave on the night of January 19th and saw the roses and cognac left behind. The following year, he stopped by the cemetery to see if he could catch a glimpse of the toaster, but failed to do so, blaming a bathroom break and assuming that the toaster had come in that short window of time. When Jerome first started telling his friends about the toaster, they didn't believe him. So in the years following, he would bring them by the cemetery so they could catch a glimpse of the toaster. This tradition continued for over 30 years and progressively grew. With permission, Jerome began inviting a few select Poe fans into the now defunct Presbyterian Church to watch for the toaster. And every year was relatively the same. Mysterious figure showing up between midnight and 5.30, dressed in black and placing three roses and a half-empty bottle of cognac on Poe's grave. He would climb the fence, which I'm pretty sure is illegal, leave the tributes, and be in and out in less than 10 minutes. In 1990, a photographer from Life magazine arrived at the scene and took the only known photo of the toaster. After this, crowds began gathering outside the cemetery, hoping to see the toaster for themselves. In his anonymity, the toaster had become somewhat of a celebrity. Although the crowd never went above 200 or so people, they often traveled to Baltimore from various places all over the country just to see the toaster and his ritual. In 1993, a note was left at the grave that said, the torch will be passed. The following year, a younger man appeared at the grave. A note left that year said the original toaster had died, but that his son would continue on the tradition. 
Some sources said it would be two sons, and Jerome himself believed that there were at least two or three toasters at this time. But for the sake of clarity, I'll be referring to the toaster in the singular form for the rest of this video. But the new toaster didn't seem to take the tradition as seriously as his father. He never dressed quite as nicely and replaced his father's sweet notes, such as Edgar, I Haven't Forgotten You, with some rather controversial ones. Poe's famous short story, The Mask of the Red Death, ends with the line, and darkness and decay and the Red Death held illimitable dominion over all. Taking a cue from the story, the toaster's 2001 note read, The New York Giants, darkness and decay and the big blue hold dominion over all. The Baltimore Ravens, a thousand injuries they will suffer. Edgar Allan Poe, evermore. I'm no football fan, but apparently this was a reference to the upcoming Super Bowl in which the New York Giants were set to play the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore residents took this note as a dig at their beloved team, which ruffled some feathers around town. See what I did there? Ravens? Feathers? I'm sorry. But in 2004, the toaster tackled the most feared subject in all of polite conversation politics. This year's note read, The sacred memory of Poe and his final resting place is no place for French cognac. With great reluctance but respect for family tradition, the cognac is place. The memory of Poe shall live evermore. People believe the toaster was upset at the French due to their opposition to the Iraq war. Jerome, who had collected the toaster's notes as well as the cognac bottles over the years, was initially reluctant to show the note to the press due to its political nature, but ultimately he decided to share it, saying he didn't want to censor the toaster. In 2007, 92-year-old Poe historian Sam Porpora, who Jerome regarded as a personal mentor, made a stunning announcement. Porpora had been working for years to preserve the graves at the Westminster burying grounds, and even organized tours of the catacombs beneath the church to drum up publicity. And now he claimed he concocted the Poe toaster story as a publicity stunt. He and his tour guides would take turns dressing up as the toaster and performing the ritual, never imagining it would get as big as it did. But there were some problems with Purpura's story. For starters, the toaster had seemingly died over a decade earlier, and Purpura was still very much alive. He also claimed to have made up the story in an interview in 1967, but the interview he was referring to didn't take place until 1976. And there was also the fact that church members claimed to see the toaster as early as 1949. People who knew Purpura also claimed he liked to make up stories about the church and burial grounds for dramatic effect. Some even believe that's why he was let go from being church historian and curator of the Poe House when the city acquired the property in the early 1980s. Jerome didn't believe his foreign mentor's story at all, saying, There are holes so big in Sam's story, you could drive a Mack truck through them. Jerome also said he would keep up the rituals, and the following year, over 150 people showed up to the grave. But two years later, in 2010, something weird happened. The night of January 19th began as usual. A crowd of about 50 people from across the country gathered at the cemetery for the annual toasting. But even during the night, Jerome wasn't sure the toaster would show up. The previous year, 2009, had been the 200th anniversary of Poe's birth. A fitting time, some believed, to end the ritual and go out with the bang. And sure enough, by 5.30 a.m., the toaster was nowhere to be found. Still, the crowd gathered again in 2011, hoping that the toaster had just somehow been unable to make it, that he had been ill or had car troubles. But for the second year in a row, the toaster once again failed to show up. At least four people approached the grave with the roses and cognac, but none of them arranged the flowers in the same way as the toaster, and all failed to give the secret signal Jerome had worked out with the toaster. These people have been dubbed faux toasters. In an early morning interview, Jerome, despite his speculation about 2009 being the last year, was skeptical that the tradition was indeed done. He also joked that if it was really done, he could finally get some sleep. In 2012, there was some hope left. About a dozen Poe fans still waited outside the gates. Jerome, however, was prepared to declare the tradition officially dead if the toaster didn't show up. And just after 6 a.m., when there had been several imposters but no sign of the real toaster, he did just that. You'd think that would be the end of the story, but Baltimore wasn't quite ready to let the tradition die. 
In November 2015, the Maryland Historical Society, Hoe Baltimore, and the Westminster Burying Grounds held a contest to select a new toaster. The toaster performed tributes and was selected by secret ballot to honor Poe the following January. Much like the original toaster, his identity would be kept a secret. Sure enough, the tribute happened, this time a little earlier on January 16th. The toaster played a violin and appeared in the early evening rather than in the dead of night, but still left the traditional roses and cognac. Jerome said no one could replace the original toaster, but that fans were excited to see the tradition revived. In December 2016, it was announced that the toaster would continue the tradition the following year, which he did. I couldn't find anything about it from this year or the year before, but I'd like to think the tradition still continues and will for years to come. But the initial question still remains. Who was the original Poe Toaster? One theory suggests that the toaster was a local poet and artist named David Footlong Franks. There's an interesting story about Franks doing a poetry reading that, for some reason, involved him firing an unloaded gun in the air above his head. But during this particular performance, he accidentally fired the gun at his head and spent the rest of the reading bleeding from his forehead. This doesn't have a lot to do with the toaster, but it was just too weird to pass up telling here. Franks died on January 14th, 2009, just days before the second toaster's last appearance. But could he be the original? Who knows? Although since the original apparently died in 1993, I doubt it. But the most prominent theory seems to be that Jeff Jerome himself is the toaster, or at least knows who he is. This kind of makes sense when you consider how involved he was with the whole process, as well as basically making the vigil famous. He also worked out a secret signal with the toaster, which I'd imagine would be difficult to do without at least talking to him. Over the years, Jerome has vehemently denied being the toaster or knowing his identity. He insists that not only could he have lost his job due to fraud if it turned out to be him, but that he was always inside the church when the toaster appeared at the grave. He also questioned why he would have stopped the tradition when it was garnering so much publicity. Jerome also believes the toaster's identity will never become public knowledge unless someone makes a deathbed confession. Over the years, Jerome's thoughts about the toaster have shifted. At one point, he said that if he truly knew who it was, he'd have to tell someone. Later on, he said that even if he did know, he couldn't tell anyone, not even his wife. He also said at one point that a lot of people didn't even want to know who the toaster was. For every person who wanted to know who he was, there were 20 who said, don't you dare. I would have been tarred and feathered and run out of town on a rail. I've covered John and Jane Doe cases on this channel and the Poe Toaster technically fits that description. But this isn't someone whose life was cut short or who has a family desperately looking for answers as to what happened to their missing loved one. This is a man who in all likelihood died a natural death and chose to remain anonymous. So while I know a lot of people are curious, it's not like we need to find out who he is to provide closure to a grieving family. Personally, I think this is one case where the mystery is half the fun and I'm not eager to see it solved anytime soon. But what are your thoughts on the Poe Toaster? Do you think it's Jeff Jerome or one of the other men listed here? Do you think it's someone else entirely? Do you even wanna know or would you rather it remain a mystery? Do you think the toaster chose 2009 to stop the tradition because it was Poe's birthday? Or do you think the new toaster just wasn't as into it as the previous one? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share it. And for more dark content, I hope you will consider subscribing. Don't forget, The Revenants comes out July 9th. There's a link below where you can get more information and pre-order if you like. Thanks so much for watching and have a creepy day. Bye guys.